Hello, this is Tae Kwon from Keen, New Hampshire, and this is your Ripe Global Implantology Case Review. I would like to share a case of Shelly with you today. Shelly was referred to my office due to unrestorable mandibular right first molar. As you can see, tooth was fractured at the gingival line, and it was deemed unrestorable. And this is the radiographic view before the extraction. And as you can see in this case, the root, mesial and distal root, appear to be relatively well diverging, leaving a lot of septal bone that is available to secure the implant. And a lot of time when I do first molar immediate implant, especially if this tooth is the very last or distal tooth in the arch, I would like to keep the occlusal table of the first molar implant to be about 8 to 9 millimeter instead of 12 millimeter. The reason is I don't want to keep the occlusal table as small as possible so that there's not too much occlusal trauma on this implant by being the most distal tooth. So a lot of time when that's the case, the best place to place the implant in first molar case is between the septum and the mesial socket, or maybe in the mesial socket. They will give you about eight to nine millimeter occlusal table by being four or five millimeter away from the distal marginal ridge of the second premolar. So after the tooth was taken out atraumatically without eliminating too much bone or grinding too much bone away. Initial osteotomy was performed and guide pin was placed and you can clearly see from the distal marginal ridge of the second premolar to the center of the pin is about, if you look at it, between four and a four and a half millimeter. Then this will give me at the end nine, eight to nine millimeter occlusal table for this particular implant. So after I finished the osteotomy, implant was placed, and you can see it's kind of between the mesial socket and the center of the septum. After implant is placed in a prosthetically driven position, bone graft was placed, and healing abutment was chosen, and then the flaps were approximated together using stitches. And this is periapical radiograph right after the extraction. You can clearly see there's a good septal bone that I can engage the distal part of my implant that is going to go close to the mesial socket. And this is with the initial guide pin after initial osteotomy. And this is after I place the implant. This size of the implant is 4.8 millimeter by 10 millimeter. And after that, I place the healing abutment and then graft the remaining socket with FDBA, cross-linked collagen membrane, and biologic modifier. In this case, was platelet-derived growth factor, which were used to hydrate the FDBA. So a lot of time, immediate implant concept can be applied not only to the anterior zone, but you can also doing that, do that on the posterior molar, especially when mesial and distal root, or in the upper, three roots are diverging. That means there's a more septum available that you can secure the implant to get nice primary stability. Another thing that is really important in this case is when you're thinking about doing immediate implant, you want to make sure that you do not traumatize hard and soft tissue during the extraction. The extraction has to be done in a very atraumatic way to preserve soft and hard tissue architecture. If you would like to learn how to do atraumatic extraction and immediate implants like so, in combination with predictable bone graft, please join me a fellowship in modern implantology. Music